My mother came here in the early 80s, and she came here as an orphan. She worked three jobs. Two of them were at fast food restaurants, and a third one was at a local car rental company. I was born in China. I moved here when I was eight years old. I was picked on a lot. Um, my parents, not speaking a word of English, they couldn't even fend for us. It was just, you know, like, they just told us, like, put your head down and, like, stay out of trouble and, like, study hard, and someday, like, that will pay off. My parents were both undocumented from Mexico, and so grew up in Los Angeles in the 90s was a, a different and difficult time. My dad, for the longest time, struggled to find work because he wasn't documented and he would do sort of odd jobs, work as a mechanic, work as a janitor. My mom would take care of kids, also work as a janitor. When I began teaching um, in inner city Houston, half of my students were Latino and half of my students were African American. And one thing that I realized was that a, the vast majority of my students would count themselves out for opportunities simply because of the neighborhood they grew up in or and thinking they didn't have the connections. And I found that it was because, whether it be they wanted to work for a corporation or whether it be because they wanted to be a doctor or a lawyer or an engineer, the companies that hired these type of professionals didn't have people who looked like them. And so it was at that point that I realized it was incredibly important for minorities to enter these fields and pave a way for others to come after them. When we were getting naturalized, I just remember having an attorney and I was like, oh my gosh, like the lawyer is a problem solver and that's what I want to be for my family. So for me, speaking Spanish at home, learning English, what that later meant is that I would be translating for my parents whenever they would have to deal with, with things with uh, landlords or neighbors or other people. I remember specifically when folks needed, to, needed help drafting letters to their employer, for example, to, to ask for back wages or uh, just certain things that they needed as, that they were entitled to as, as employees, they would often come to me and this was after they were trying to advocate for themselves. And so I think that for me early on gave me a better idea of what justice looks like. And so I think growing up in that context really motivated me to do a lot of the work that I was gonna do later on. It was either right before or right after Christmas, I got an email and it said, congratulations, you're an LMJ scholar. I was incredibly ecstatic um, that this particular organization would believe that I'm a good candidate to carry forward the values um, and carry forward the, the mission for diversity and inclusion. And uh, it really solidified my um, my zeal to go into corporate law. So I heard of LMJ through former scholars and through folks here at Harvard Law School who were admitted before and applied. Well, particularly the folks that had won it before, uh, they were just an amazing group of people that were supportive throughout my law school journey. And not only that, but also knowing who had won in the past and that I would be a part of a, of a community of folks that had similar stories like my own and that were thriving. Having those kind of folks that I can call in and they're very understanding, very supportive, and will give you just uh, uh, real advice. I mean, that's, that, that's powerful for a first-generation college student like myself. The summer after my 1L year at law school, I went to the MCCA conference in D.C., and that's when I met Toby Chung, a partner at Kirkland Ellis, and he spoke about, you know, the diversity efforts at Kirkland, um, you know, and I was really convinced that I need to go work for Kirkland one day. Um, and. Later on, he actually got me an interview with Kirkland, New York. He went ahead and, and vouched for me, and so here I am today. There really are no limits to what the LMJ scholarship is, right? So in addition to the financial support that they've given us, um, they've also given us a network. I know that I can contact not only Jean, but Sophia, not only my scholarship um, sponsor, but really anyone in the MCCA network. I can't even count the number of people that I met at the gala when I was able to attend as a law student, and I look forward to doing that in the future. We're not passive about our talent. We actively seek out the best and the brightest. Destiny is an excellent example of that talent. We know that she will be an exceptional lawyer with us, and more importantly, we know that we can learn from Destiny. It's not about just her learning from the lawyers at the firm, more importantly is the lawyers at the firm learning from her experience, from her perspective. Part of the success of any DNI effort strategy involves having very strong collaborations and partnerships with the minority bars. 
MCCA is an excellent example of that. Thank you for supporting the LMJ Scholarship. Thank you so much for supporting the LMJ Scholars. This is a reminder that together we're building one of the most diverse communities in the legal field. Thank you for your support of MCCA. Thank you for your support of LMJ Scholars. And thank you for really being a beacon of diversity at your various corporations and your various law firms. It means the world to us, and we look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you.